Hello, hello, it's Lance, and here on the Fab Four Archivist channel, we talk about pretty much everything that made the Beatles the biggest band in the world. And sometimes we talk about the latest news. This is one of those times. First up, some audio of the quote-unquote boardroom tape has been made public on YouTube. This is the tape that made big news recently, because it sounds like the band assumed there would be a record after Abbey Road on this tape. Of an album, we could just do only stuff that we you really took. I mentioned the tape on a previous Beatles News episode from mid-September. Some insiders have already heard portions of this tape, but this is the first time most fans will hear it for themselves. Now this is just a short clip, but rare audio from the band like this is incredible for all but the most jaded of fans. Next up, Ringo Everywhere. As if Ringo weren't already here, there, and everywhere leading up to September's Abbey Road re-release, he's had a lot going on in the last couple of weeks. Here are some highlights. His new studio album, What's My Name, came out on October 25th. Sales details are not available at the time of recording this video, but the reviews are mostly positive. For one, Ken Womack, writing for Salon, calls it a triumphant return to form. If you've heard it, let me know what you think about it down in the comments. Ringo has also widely released his photo book, Another Day in the Life. Unlike the new album though, the fan reviews are not all that great, with some disappointed in things like the layout and the small size of the photos. Make sure you check out sample pages before you buy. But regardless, let's keep in mind that Ringo has said before that he publishes photo books in lieu of writing a biography. So according to him, if you want his story, this is it. And on Tuesday, October 29th, Ringo held an event with David Lynch and photographer Henry Diltz. Much of the event was about the book and photography in general, but certainly with David Lynch there, meditation was heavily discussed. And transcend and get wet with that. You infuse some of that each time you transcend, you start expanding consciousness and these all positive qualities. But it wasn't all product chatter and mind games. Ringo's playing was brought up as well. I do believe that if the guy is singing, you don't have to play drum boogie all over him. You know what I mean? The song gives the song and you can bring it up and bring it down or fill in a little to bring that verse in or the chorus. And, but not while the guy yesterday. The event was streamed live courtesy of Parade Magazine and I'll link to it, an archived version, in the description. Before the next news bit, I want to mention that I've got a big new video coming out. It's all about how the famous Side 2 medley on Abbey Road came to be. After it goes live, I'll link to it at the top of the screen now. This video is a collaboration with the You Can't Unhear This channel. I'm telling the story of the medley, and You Can't Unhear This is taking a look at some of the rarely heard sounds in it. Give both videos a watch when you get a chance. And if you're enjoying these videos, my videos here on the Fem4 Archivist channel, please like them and share them on social media. And if you're a super fan, and you might be if you're watching these news videos, I would really, really appreciate your support over on Patreon, where you can contribute as little or as much as you want to help fund gear and research sources and production time for this channel. By the way, the new Side 2 video was shared with patrons there about a week before anyone else saw it. The last bit of Ringo news includes one of my other favorite musicians, Dave Grohl of the Foo Fighters. The pair sat down, in a bathtub, rubber ducky and all, for a chat for Rolling Stone. Unlike recent forgettable and pedestrian interviews, this was a fascinating conversation. Dave asked about Skiffle. The two shared their lack of interest in drum practice. And most touching, they connected over losing a bandmate, Ringo and John Lennon, and Dave and Kurt Cobain. Give it a read. And the photos are great too. Here's a little Paul news, and instead of telling you about the crude new video for Looking for Changes, let's talk about the hunt for McCartney's old bass. Hofner, the instrument company, recently launched the hashtag Trace the Bass campaign, searching for the beloved guitar that disappeared in 1969. Paul McCartney undoubtedly made the viola bass style an icon, and he used a few different models during the Beatles years. But the first one, used heavily from 1961 through 1963, according to Hofner, was last played by Paul during the Get Back, Let It Be sessions, and now it's presumed stolen. Hofner is promising to help find the instrument for Paul without consequence or legal involvement. And their Lost Bass webpage details what makes this guitar distinct. Check it out to learn more. Rumor has it that the bass is in Canada and has been for years, but we Beatles fans, we know how these rumors can be. On the off chance you know anything about the guitar's whereabouts, I bet you could swing a meeting with Paul with that kind of info. And if you do, tell him I said hey. Lastly, a personal note, 
I really enjoy creating these news videos, but it's a bit intense to create one week after week. I'm going to move to a two week schedule every other Friday so that I can invest more time in making big videos like the stories behind the songs. Of course, as major news comes up, I may post more often. All right, that's it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. See y'all next time.